Hey there, everybody. Jandor here, bringing you another episode of Learning the Ropes. This is a Dota 2 game replay commentary style where I played the one and only Crystal Maiden. I um, haven't done a Crystal Maiden yet game yet, <clears throat> and she is one of my favorite supports. Suprats, if you will, and I wanted to kind of show off this game. This game in particular was interesting because the laning stage is, well, my lane did not go super great really early on, but as you will see, there are ways to recover from that. So, Crystal Maiden. Crystal Maiden is a great support. She's good as a five roll, i.e. someone who's getting the low amount of farm. Um, for those of you out there who don't know about the roll thing, because I only just sort of recently learned about it myself... There are five positions, basically, on a team, and that dictates farm priority, right? So your one position is the person needs the most farm. In a game like this, that would probably be the sniper. He's the hardest carry of our team. Our team, by the way, consists of a sniper, an Ursa, a Tinker, myself on the Crystal Maiden, and a Witch Doctor. Ursa, Witch Doctor, go bot. Uh, Tinker went mid, and myself, I went top with the sniper. The Our enemy team is an anti-mage, a centaur, war runner, a pudge, a templar assassin, and a ricky. If you've played Dota before, you can see that this can either is either going to go real well uh, for them, or it's going to go terribly. And we will wait to find out which one it is. Suffice to say, so, talking back to positions again. All right. So our sniper's probably position one. He's in the safe lane top. He's going to be trying to get the majority of the farm, so I can, provided I can keep people off of his the back. The game is on. Next is going to be our, our two, which is typically your mid lane tinker. Tinker's really good at jungling and ancient, doing ancients and other stuff as well. Got a feeling. So he's able to get a lot of good. farm because he can do a lot with it. Uh, then you have your Ursa on the three spot. Ursa, you know, needs a couple of basic items, but then can run around and gank and just kind of be monstrous without needing a ton of really powerful late game items. Uh, and then you have the Witch Doctor and myself. Witch Doctor and myself can both be played as a five spot. Uh, I ended up just buying wards and, and courier and everything this game, so Witch Doctor, you know, was able to get some more farm or was able to use his farm for other stuff. All right, so here we go. We have a Ricky and an Anti Mage in our lane. Uh, Ricky and an Anti Mage. Two melee heroes, two. Carries, Anti Mage being one of the hardest carries in the game, and Ricky is also a hard carry, um, who tends to stomp pubs, um, but is not. He he can be shut down if you play smart about it. Um, his biggest, the Ricky's biggest thing is the fact that he's permanently invisible at level six, unless he's attacking, you know, or in fade down time. Right? He doesn't have to. He's just always invisible. So if you don't have detection, it can be a real problem dealing with him. Um, the anti-mage can be really scary if he gets farmed because he's able to do a lot of damage. He can blink in and out and initiate, but he needs a lot of farm to be able to fight really effectively. However, these guys really wanted to kind of go hard. So what we were doing is I was trying to harass the carries so that sniper can get farmed. Our sniper was... I, I think he was trying to farm. Um, he was also trying to harass them. Um, so there was a little bit of back and forth there. We're trying to get our levels up. Uh, let's talk about skills. So Crystal Maiden has your standard four skills, as as a lot of heroes do. Uh, the first skill I put a point into, and I typically do this, although it's not always best. I actually meant to do something different this game, but just did it sort of on reflex. Uh, her aura, her passive is called Arcane Aura. It's global. It gives mana regen to all units on the map. Um, so when you put one point into it, it's one point of mana regen to everybody, which is pretty big. It really can make a big difference in the early stage of the game and sort of throughout the game as you level it up. And it's doubled for Crystal Maiden. What this means is that you don't need to prioritize items that give you mana regen. Oh, here we go. No Anti-Mage jumped in on me. Um, I'm using my second skill. I should have just ran there. But as you can see, they're dealing tons of damage. I'm going to die. Oh, look at that. I'm going to die. Sniper is going to try. It should have just potentially ran away. I think he's going to stay and try and deal damage. Or possibly, I don't know. He could have just right-clicked. Here's the thing. So, early game, you're pretty squishy as a Crystal Maiden, right? Like, I've got less than 500 health at level 2. Now, I didn't pick up any GG branches, so that was possibly... Or, sorry, Ironwood branches. So, that was partly my fault. And blink and blink. And one of the things that makes this lane kind of scary for us early game is that Sniper is also really squishy. He doesn't have an escape mechanism. So, if I'm not there to support him, he really should just be sitting back by tower, potentially. Or it, it, it becomes hard for him to lane effectively. The Ricky... Here has Blink Strike, um, and he's going Backstab. And we have our Anti-Mage, who's going Mana Break and Blink. So they both have a way to initiate in on us pretty easily. Um, 
down, without top towers you know needing to be nearby as long as they have vision they can kind of jump in and deal some damage and since sniper and i are both pretty pretty frail um this can be kind of frightening so back to the skills. <clears throat> Crystal Maiden's got, you know, her Essence Aura, which is really legit, as I have stated. Uh, her W skill is Frostbite. Frostbite is probably one of her better skills. Um, what it does is it's got a pretty decent mana cost scale from 115 to 150. So not super, super cheap, but, you know, you can't, like, spam your combos up. And here becomes the Anti-Mage and the Ricky again. I'm dropping my nukes. And I'm getting slowed by the Ricky, but the Ricky is going to get away. But we are able to kill the Anti-Mage. So we kill the Anti-Mage. Our Sniper is still fine. He's going to try and hunt this Ricky down and keep right-clicking him. Um, <clears throat> if he had been level 6, that would have been a dead Ricky. Um, but what are you going to do? Suffice it to say that they are able to deal a lot of damage. Now, one of the things I should have done that fight, probably, was turn around and right-click the Ricky. Because Ricky deals a majority of his damage from backstab, and what backstab is, it's his, it's his passive. It deals a multiplier. It's ba it's like extra damage based on his agility. It's a multiplier, uh, and specifically, we can just tell you, it is right now one times his agility uh, damage added, bonus damage. All right. So that means if you get a lot of agility items on right now, this only works if your opponent's back is turned. Which is why I was saying, if I had turned around to face him, it might have been a better idea than sitting there and man-fighting the, um, the anti-mage and facing the anti-mage because Ricky was dealing a ton of bonus damage that I could have avoided. Alright? So thing, little things like that can make a big difference against a hero like Ricky. And back to Frostbite. So what Frostbite does is it encases a unit in ice, um, which basically freezes them in place. And prevents, I think, prevents them from attack. And it prevents them from attacking. So as you can see, I frostbite down on the anti mage. I'm attacking the Ricky. I'm like, I don't know if I should run or not. I'm gonna try and eat a tango. It's not gonna matter. So they're gonna kill me, and I think they're gonna clean up I do my the sniper. Work. Not gonna lie. At this point in the game, I was feeling pretty shitty. I was like, man, this sucks. Like, Radiant I don't know what we're gonna do. Like, we're feeding up. the Ricky and the anti mage, and that's just a really bad scene. Our lane is not going well. But we got four kills. Radiant's mid tower. Campaign. As you can see, <clears throat> our uh, Who's got him? Our Tinker has one. Our Ursa has one. Our Sniper's got a kill. All right. So we got some kills going there. There's a dead Anti-Mage coming in. And here's a dead Ricky. So here's what happened. Um, we were hanging out in lane. I was feeling really bad. I was like, man, we shouldn't do this. But hung on. The Tinker rotated top. And these two heroes, Ricky and, and Anti-Mage, are both pretty frail at this point in the game. Even yeah, with the farm, the, the free out, free money they've been hell. getting from ganking or killing me. Um, so with the, you know some some burst damage from our Tinker and just right clicking them down, because as you can see, like they have this guy's got a uh, stout shield and the Ricky's got a stout shield. Uh, no, that's a centaur. I'm sorry, but the Ricky doesn't have a stout shield. Anti mage does. So they're not going to be able to absorb a ton of damage. Like they don't have a lot of survivability. They're both kind of frail. They're agi heroes. So right clicking them down is generally kind of effective. I don't hit hard at all. I'm only hitting for 49 damage, but that's still damage. Like it, it's still damage. Um, and then my novas, my nukes are pretty substantial. Radiant Back to frostbite. Tower ain't a pretty sight right now. Um, this will last 10 seconds on creeps level six or below. It lasts a much slower, shorter duration on heroes. Um, you can see it. It's right now at level three. It's two and a half seconds on a hero, and it deals some minor damage, seventy. But really, what it does is it prevents them from moving. I think it prevents them from attacking. All right, here's something that happened. I bought somebody's on a roll. Sentry wards. How about that? Um, because I knew I had a Ricky who had just hit level six. <clears throat> So by placing the sentry ward right there, when they were looping around through the trees, Ricky couldn't go invisible, so we knew they were coming. And the Tinker was still up here, so we just murdered them both, and they barely dealt us any damage. <clears throat> this is where the game starts to turn in our favor. I think pretty significantly as, as, as things progress, because now they're starting to lose whatever advantage they had, um, and they don't really have any supports. The only, they've got a decent initiator in the... Um, well, they've got some initiation. Radiant they've got a pretty good initiator in the, the Pudge, um, who can be pretty scary if he's being played well. And they've got a pretty scary Dyer's initiation if you get Blink Dagger on the Centaur because of his Hoof Stomp. Radiant's top towers. But Pudge. other than that, they don't. They, they have a lot of greedy... It's a kind of a greedy lineup. It really is a very greedy lineup. There's a lot of c characters Dyer's that need a lot of farm to be pretty effective. How about that? Now, as you can see, I still haven't gotten boots yet. 
some because my oh. concern has been and there's another kill on the anti-mage we're getting some slows down <clears throat> and firing at the ricky and we're going to kind of back off we were trying to put some pressure on the tower we might have wanted to back off but with sniper up here we figured well you know and all of a sudden i think that's going to be a dead ricky and boom sniper hit level six he had assassinate right clicks the ricky a little ways and it's like well <clears throat> all right gg bro i'm gonna get you with assassinate there you go and as I said, I still haven't gotten boots yet because I've been trying to prioritize. I've one, I've been dying a lot, Radiant and two, I was trying to prioritize getting um, wards so that, and TP scrolls so that I can move around and so that I could give us vision and stuff so that we the knew Radiant when ganks were happening and things of that nature so that the Ricky couldn't get away. Good stuff like that. I have now picked up my boots, and we can talk about the Q. So her Q ability is called Crystal Nova. It's got a huge radius, um, a decent range. It's got a decent duration. What it does, it slows... Uh, movement and attack, and it deals damage, scaling from 100 to 250, and it's got a mana cost scales from 100 to 160. It's a 15 second cooldown. Um, Frostbite is a 10 second cooldown, so she's not really going to get her abilities off more than once, maybe twice in team fight. Uh, it's something to keep in mind with Crystal Maiden, but she's really good in the lane, and she can lock down heroes really effectively. And since the radius on uh, Crystal Nova is pretty big, you can actually deal a pretty decent slow That's to a lot of heroes. Oh, also. Bad. The slow and attack slow doesn't scale with level. So one point in it is still pretty good. What you're basically getting is damage and duration, which is nice to have, but not necessarily high priority. Ah, uh, there's a Ricky. Trouble brewing a Ricky. I don't have sentry down. wards down here. We got a lot of us down here. This was kind of a weird moment for us because we we're like, well, I was kind of rotating down because I saw the ward. I was like, maybe I can place another, another, uh, I wanted to place a ward up here on the high ground. Like over here, as you guys can see, forward, by their ancient camp. How about that? Uh, Tinker just murdered the anti mage and decided to come down and game for some reason instead of farming in a lane that didn't have anybody in it. But what are you going to do? And um, yeah, I was kind of like, well, I don't know. Are we going for a gank or are we going for a tower push? Like, I wasn't really sure. This was kind of a moment where my indecision against, I think, more skilled opponents, um, or if we hadn't been as ahead as we were, that indecision can be costly. Um, it's something to keep in mind, like, you don't really want to just be standing around doing nothing. You want to be either moving into the jungle, you know, Crystal Maiden can jungle okay with Frostbite. Um, she can, you know, freeze down some creeps, and all of a sudden, here we go. And this is a bad move by me. Alright, so, what did I do? I wanted to try to get a little bit of vision, in theory, by dropping my Crystal Nova up here so we could see the high ground and potentially do something. But we knew the Pudge was still on the field, so what I basically did was just feed the Pudge. It was a really bad move, poor decision making. Like I said, this whole middle area right here where I came mid was just poor decision making on my part. It would have been better for me to potentially rotate bottom, help out bottom lane, rotate back top, push that lane out, go into the jungle, Dyer's get a little bit of farm in the jungle, move over to Ancients and stack Roche Ancients stuff. for the uh, the, the Tinker. <clears throat> Meanwhile, our Ursa decided to solo Roche because he's an Ursa and he can do that <clears throat> with our Witch Doctor helping, I think. And I'm trying to figure out what to do. So, last skill to talk about as our team is running around trying to game. They game it hard. Let's take a look over here. What's the Tinker doing? Oh, man, they're running around. Tinker's getting some damage with his arrows. Now, he went a build. This is an interesting build. It's not a bad build on Tinker. He went the full-on burst damage route, all right? So, he went laser missile max as opposed to maxing March of the Machines and using it to farm and push lanes. <laughs> given how the game was going I think that actually ended up being a smart decision because it allowed him to be mobile and to really be able to gank and push down these heroes um, and since we had a sniper we had decent push potential even without spamming march so I think that, that I think that worked out for us but both are viable and long term like long game end game uh, the march machines build is, is I think maybe a little bit better just because it allows you to farm more efficiently and faster um, so something to keep in mind but we're not talking about Tinker right now we're talking about Crystal Maiden we're going to talk about her ult actually this is what happened alright so I see down here that Ursa's getting his you know his ass kicked and I'm like well let's come in here let's get a ward down all right, Ursa, you want a game? <clears throat> There's a Ricky. We don't really can't see him because I don't have my sentries down yet. That was a mistake. If I thought he was there, I could have done dropped the sentry. Would have killed the Ricky. But we frostbite up the anti-mage. Ursa murders him. And they all back off. They might have been able to initiate on me with the centaur in that moment, for example. Or the Ricky might have been able to come in. Meanwhile... Templar Assassin runs in and then gets attacked a bunch, then runs away, but they don't have any vision, so she's just taking, you know, she's invisible, melded in. Six in a row. <clears throat> but, uh, so I'm like, well, fuck, I better come back and provide vision. But then they were like, well, we have area of effect, we generally know where she is, so they killed her anyway. A lot of back and forth. 
Probably should have just kept moving the lane and pushing the lane down so we could have taken the tower faster. But, you know, we're moving as five at this point. We've got their mid T1 down, their top T1 down, and we're basically moving into their bottom lane to push that down as well. What have I gotten? What have I gotten? All right, let's talk about R. Her ultimate is called Freezing Field. Uh, it's channeled, and it surrounds you. It channel lasts for, I forget, seven seconds? Seven seconds. Um, it has a big radius. It gives movement slow, attack slow, damage, um, and it's a decent amount of damage, actually. Uh, these little ex ace explosions drop all around you and then blow up, and enemies can take just a ton of damage from it, even without an ag scepter. Um, it's really good. The one thing to remember is just like Witch Doctor's ulti, you know, it's channeled, which means that somebody stuns you, knocks you back, picks you up in a tornado. Literally any kind of disable will stop it being channeled. So you want to be really ca careful when and how you use it so that it doesn't just get kind of like negated and then you're out 200 mana and your ulti, which has a pretty long cooldown. It's 150 seconds at level one. So that's your skills. Mid -tower could use a little help. As you can see, my skill build is basically to max out Frostbite and then go and get a point in Q, uh, or Crystal that? Nova, and all oh, this is a bad, this is a sad pudge. Towers, you know the drill. Coming in there and stomping face. We're pushing it on the towers. That was actually a pretty, that was a really slick hook. So I had Frostbit the uh, Templar Assassin, and she was basically screwed. But the pudge was like, grab, snagged her with the hook. Brought her back, but unfortunately was still close enough for that we just charged in and snapped them both up, slowed them down, and killed them. You know the um, sometimes you can't really do much. <laughs> this is one of those times for the pudge. Item-wise, I started the game with Courier, uh, Observer Wards, and I think a Salve, a Tango, and a Clarity. Seven in a row. Probably don't need the Clarity that? unless you're really spamming Crystal Nova or something, which is not necessarily a bad thing to do. I decided to TP top. Um, I don't have uh, sentry wards, but I do have dust in case the Ricky's running around and being a pain. Anyway, after that, I basically was feeding in the, on the top lane, so my item progression was mostly just wards and, cour and flying courier early. But now, I've got boots. I go into tranquil boots on Crystal Maiden is not a bad build. There are probably other things. Oh, here we go. Buy dust. There's Rickies. Dyer's mid but just buy a dust. A because if you see him, this is what happens. Five in a row. He dies. Like, if you know he's there and you dust him and he's by himself, he's pretty easy to take down, especially if you have other disables that are able to lock him down, which as a crystal maid you do. You've got a slow and you've got a, a lockdown in form of frostbite. Um, in any event, I like Tranquil Boots on Crystal Maiden. Um, there are possibly other boots that might be good as well, but honestly, Tranquil Boots are cheap. They give you some much-needed armor, and... They um, top give you a lot of regen and movement speed. Oh, I get, all right, so this is fun. I get ganked by the Pudge. I'm getting dismembered. The Tinker comes up here. Uh, and then here comes the... Huh, tinker manages to blink up there. Kills the Pudge. The Anti-Mage is like, oh, I got a free kill on the Crystal Maiden. Kills me, but then Tinker's like, well, I'm still here, bro. And kills the Anti-Mage. And then we basically trade two for one. And since I am a low priority farm, it's not, a big, not as big a deal if I die. So, definitely worth the trade. Tower for the radiant. So, I also picked up a magic stick. Magic stick's really good. I decided to go for a wand as well. Turn the magic stick into a wand. Meh. I had some money. It's not bad. It gives you some stats, which will help you with damage. It helps you with mana pool. It helps you with health. A lot of things like that. It's good. It's They're good. Um, but, you know, not, necess not always necessary. But a decent cheap item on her. I accidentally used some of the uh, ironwood branches in my stash for my magic wand, then somehow bought a magic wand and somehow still had a, a ironwood branch in my stash. Sometimes this, it gets silly, but whatever. I get wand, I get tranquil boots, and then I start going for a mech. Um, at this point I realized what I should have done was buy more wards because we're out of wards and that's my job. Um, but I was getting excited and wanted to get a mechanism up so that we could have some more sustain. Mechanism obviously really good. Um, and she's a good one to carry it because she's got a decent mana pool. She's got a lot of mana regen. And um, she'll be running around in the back of the fight, and it's good for her to have a heal and just some extra regen herself. I'm up to nine armor, uh, um, 13 armor now, by the way, with the buckler and the tranquil boots. Um, oh, there's a fight happening. <clears throat> Tinker's coming in here, coming doing his damage, dropping his ganks. Here's an anti mage blinking in, and I'm like, well, all right, anti mage. So I drop Crystal Nova. And as you can see, since I was standing right next to him, he only Seven got hit by a row. few of those. He's trying to man fight me. But he's got, like, no damage. I mean, this guy's got nothing. 
especially against he's got no damage items. He's really far behind. So he sat there and hit me and was hitting me for like a good four or five seconds. I'm a I'm a crystal made with 872 health, and I still was able to sit there and tank it and trade hits with him until the sniper was like, "Oh, I guess I better come back and assassinate this guy." And then boom, dead anti mage. At this point, I'm like, I probably should get some wards. I back off. I'm like, all right, team, I'm gonna run away for a little bit now and regen. <laughs> I do. And then I come back to drop some wards so we get some more vision. Uh, this is a, I like warding this spot. It's not necessarily the best spot ever, but one of the things it does do is give you a decent amount of vision over their uh, lane in between sort of mid and bottom lanes. So if they're moving around, if they're trying to jungle, if they're trying to come into the jungle or sweep around and gank you, if they're coming up mid, it gives you some vision in a, cup, in a pretty key area. Um, it's also... If they're de-warding, which these guys weren't, but if they're de-warding, it's a really obvious place for awards. That's the one caveat to consider, is that they'll probably know it's there. Pudge throwing blind hooks, not able to get anybody. We're kind of staying back. Sniper's able to take a tower. Sean coming back in 42 seconds, which we did not necessarily know. Here's a Ricky. He's like, oh my god, I'm going to go ahead and be a Ricky. And I'm like, all right, bro, I'm going to frostbite you. And then we just murdered him. Um, walked out of his cloud, was no longer silenced, and that's a dead Ricky because poor Ricky... Radiance also don't have a hell oh I'm sorry that's the TA, uh, Templar assassin no he's just looking at a bunch of different people many that were. Two the Ricky does, has the Ricky's got a Vladimir's offering all right Ricky does not have shit um and here we go we're now already at less than 20 minutes into the game getting ready to siege up onto high ground I've got a ward <clears throat> one of the things I like doing is throwing a ward on high ground if possible which is why I was coming up here um, which was a mistake because I just took tower hits and the anti mage thought he was going to be cute, but then we just, again, frostbite murder. We had three heroes and there was only one of them and they weren't being coordinated and coming in with the anti mage to potentially turn that around. Um, Radiance. Yeah, at this point, we're, we're looking to siege up tower. Our tinkers doing work, dropping lots of march to the machines, trying to kill kill things. I managed to get my mech. Down the I've got sentry wards. Like this. I was thinking maybe I could drop an observer up there, but I wasn't able to. I run back just in time because that pudge hook would have snagged me and I would have been dead. And that could have actually been real bad because top towers and I have the mech. I've got the wards for vision, um, both of the of just in general vision with the observers as well as to reveal the Ricky. Radiance mid tower could use a hand. Definitely something to be careful about. <clears throat> You don't want to, you know, be out of position. That's one of the things that's tricky with Crystal Maiden. I mean, you can see even with all this stuff, I've only, I've got level 11, Radiance less than a thousand health. I'm still super fragile, <clears throat> so you got to be careful. Well, we killed the tower, so now they're not going to have vision of our ward. And I decided, let's go ahead and drop an obs up there so we know what's going on on high ground and a sentry just in case the Ricky decides to come around while we're fighting. It might have been smarter to put the sentry closer to, um, a little farther forward. Um, but we were probably going to try and take racks, which is what I usually try to tell people to do. It's like, I mean, you can go ham all you want on the enemy team. That's good. But you really want to just take the racks down. So that way, if something goes silly, goes wrong when you're going ham, um, they can't just counter push you out. You actually have made a dent. How about um, that? And melee racks is generally the one you want to get because that'll give you um, buffer melee creeps against their creeps. And that'll help push the lane and keep it pushed. Radiance mid racks. Didn't so here we go. Farming up. Killing stacks. Should have been paying a little bit closer attention to their heroes because they now have three up and we are kind of alone. I dropped my mech there to give us some more push <clears throat> because it actually gives bonus armor and stuff like that to your creeps too. So I was hoping that that would give us some more survivability. Um, they decided to keep going. Here's an anti-mage going for the sniper. Sniper's not having a real good time. He gets killed by the ulti. We kill the anti-mage in return. Drop him out. It doesn't do anything. There's a stun. I try to come back in. But it's going to pick up the Witch Doctor. I Frostbite the uh, Centaur. There's a trap that slows me down. A hook very nearly hits me. That would have been terrible. I might have been able to kill him with a Crystal Nova if I had just set, <clears throat> gone ahead and not right-clicked, but just dropped the Crystal Nova on him. I almost certainly would have killed him, actually. <laughs> Unfortunately, I forgot. I get hoof-stomped and then killed by the Pudge. However, our Tinker's able to clean up the uh, Centaur War Runner, so it's not all bad. But that was a good situation where, if we've been paying more attention, um, and we saw a lot of them up, we probably should have backed. The sniper probably shouldn't have gone that far forward under tower range just to try to get uh, some kills. Man, was that that tower's getting beat Not that it down. matters too much because our Ursa's making things happen. He's going to go ahead and kill this guy too. Is he? Seriously, yep, he gets him. Before the fade time. Let's take a look at some game three, stats. Five, so last hits the nice. Right now. Can't do uh, the anti-mage has 15. Right now. Last hit, 16 last hits. 
That is a bad sign. Our snipers got 82. Our Ursa's got 76. I've got 11, but I'm not trying to do that. Our Tinker doesn't have that many as well. But, I mean, our sniper's doing way better than anybody else on their team in terms of last hits. If you look at the KDA, we've killed that anti mage 14 times. It's 30, 13 to 41. We've killed four, We've got 41 kills on our side Six in less in than 25 row. minutes. The game has really ran away from them pretty fast after that early rush mid on, on the uh, the top lane in the early game. So, <clears throat> we've got a lot of kills. Our Tinker making a lot of kills happen, doing a lot of that gank. Um, net worths, as you can see, the uh, highest net worth here is our Sniper at 12k, very closely followed by our Ursa and our... Oh, there's another dead anti-mage. He decided... To blink in. Radiant I don't know why. At this point, Sniper and I basically TP right top and just decided to push into lane because our other heroes were down here making a ruckus. I once again used the mech to give us some more um, sustain Radiant with our creep wave. Um, this Radiant allows us with the Crystal Nova to go ahead tower. and just clear that out and start pushing up onto the uh, high ground. Yes, I drop another sentry just in case the Ricky down. decides to come, come for a call. <laughs> like I said, Ricky, by dust, by sentries. Ricky's not that scary. If you let him get out of control, he can be scary, but that's pretty much true of almost any hero in the game. Um, certainly any carry in the so game. Long if the you let them get out of control, wrecks. they're scary. That's their job. They're carries. They're supposed to be scary if they get out of control. The trick is just to sort of keep a lid on things. And the way you can do that with a Ricky is just to buy vision, <laughs> buy detection, get a Necro 3, get a gem at some point if you're feeling good, but really just get dust and sentries and be smart about where you're placing them. Try to place them somewhat aggressively, which what I was trying to do was place them in positions it. where it's like, all right, where are we defending or where are we attacking? So that the Ricky tries to come around for a flank, we're all kind of grouped around there, we're going to see him and be able just to take him out. Um, if you place it somewhere where you're not going to be in a few seconds, Radiant then it doesn't really do you any good. That's down. another reason why you want to have dust, because if you're chasing and he tries to go invisible, you just dust Radiant him and there you go. See, here comes the Ricky. <clears throat> Now, my sentry was way too far back. I should have probably placed it a little bit closer. He decided to come in on me. So I'm like, all right, bro. <coughs> I just turned around. I had a bunch of creeps with me, and I just right-click him. I frostbite, I crystal nova, and I right-clicked him down and used a couple of nukes. He sat, the week, and, like, there was nothing he could do. He just kept attacking me for some reason. I was like, all right, I mean, I'll trade with you. Like, I know I'm pretty, we're pretty far ahead. I've got a lot of armor right now, 16 armor, and he has, well, he's looking at the Ricky. He didn't have much, as I recall. So, that's game. Pretty much that's game. What lessons learned? If you're having a bad time in your early, in your early game in the lane, rotations are important. They can make a big difference. Um, especially when you have two carries fighting for farm like that. They're both going to be taking hits back and forth, but they're both frail. Punish that. Bring people in. Use your skills. Just, you know, try to stay back. Try to play cautious. Lock them down and kill them. I figured, I, I knew, since I played Crystal Maiden before, I knew, like, I have some lockdown and disable. So if I, even if I'm dying, it's not such a big deal. If only because, uh, it, as long as I'm dying and the sniper's not dying, the sniper's still last hitting and getting experience, he's going to level up, he's going to start hitting pretty hard, he's going to get assassinate, and we're going to be able to make things happen because I can lock them down and the sniper can just right-click them. And that's what sniper does. He right-clicks things and they die. So, yeah, as a support, as a Crystal Maiden, you know, you want to go for your lockdown. You can also sometimes go for your Q before your W, uh, go for the Crystal Nova before the Frostbite. That's good if you're harassing lanes or trying to push. Um, but it's man very mana intensive to do that, so just a thing to keep in mind. Your R is really good. Your ultimate's really good, especially if you can get into, pos into a position where you are protected and you can get a lot of their heroes. Um, it can be pretty. It can be pretty pretty awesome. Like you can do a lot of damage with it. And beyond that, uh, remember to buy wards. It's really important. Even if you're not against a Ricky, vision is good. And um, that's gonna wrap up the Crystal Maiden game. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will catch everybody next time.